Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to our War in the Pacific series uh, against XTRG, our play-by-email series where we're playing through War in the Pacific Admirals Edition as the Allies, and XTRG is playing as the, as the Japanese. It is February 13th for the replay. Our orders are going to be the February 14th uh, turn. It is Valentine's Day. The Japanese have continued their offensive to the west of New Guinea, uh, north of Australia. They're very clearly isolating uh, Java and Palembang from any reinforcements that might come from Australia. Uh, and that's the situation right now. That's kind of the situation we've been in for a little bit. Meanwhile, a Japanese torpedo just torpedoed a, uh, I think that's a float plane tender, uh, the Orion, put one torpedo into it. It sinks, so we did lose one ship to an enemy sub. Uh, meanwhile, our subs are attacking Japanese uh, patrol boats, or actually are being attacked by Japanese patrol boats here, to the northwest of uh, Truck. We are in deep water, so I would assume we should be okay. Uh, it does look like the depth charges are detonating above our sub's depth. Uh, so with that being said, we'll just fast forward through there. Um, I'm curious to see how this turn plays out. Uh, but as this is a completely, uh, I guess, blind replay, if you will, I have not looked at the replay. Most of the time I do look at the replay before it occurs, but this time I have not. Um, I do also want to take this moment to wish those of you who did celebrate Christmas uh, a very Merry Christmas. I hope you guys all are having a great holiday season, as I am myself. Uh, I know I've been posting a bunch of videos, but most of that stuff has been recorded from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so this is kind of my first fresh video in a little bit, and um, I'm excited to see what happens here. Whoa, I just fast-forwarded through that. The Japanese are landing at Balak Papan, apparently. Fuck! Uh, so he's landing on the southern tip of uh, the island of Borneo. Uh, there are major oil producing facilities at Balakpapan. Ideally, he bombards and damages the city and, and does some damage to that, uh, but it doesn't look like he's doing that. Uh, we did have some coastal gunshots fired in return. We got a single hit on a Japanese two, on a single hit on two different Japanese transports. Looks like one Japanese heavy cruiser and then some Japanese destroyer transports are all involved here. So this is, I mean, I'm not super surprised. It's inevitable that he makes a strike at Borneo. He's already taken the majority of the northern coast, uh, and now he would make a play for the southern coast. Um, but it's still not super great. Um, I guess I would rather he go for Borneo before Java, though, so I guess we'll see what happens here. Meanwhile, he loses a couple of casualties in accidents on, sh on troops landing ashore. Meanwhile, his drive here tor uh, near Timor continues as he lands troops at Babur. Fast transports are landing at Tana, which is kind of to the east of New Caledonia, but not yet to Fiji. Extends his presence a little bit closer to Fiji. Doesn't really drive it any further south or get him any closer to our supply lines there, so... It's, a, it's an advance to keep an eye on, but it's nothing to be too worried about there on near the Fiji line. I mean, realistically, there's not much I can do about Borneo anyway, so if he's going to land troops on, on the island, it's just a matter of whenever he gets around to it, it's going to be pretty uh, bad for us. He's already pretty much taken the entire island of Celebs, so Borneo or Java were the logical next steps. It does look like they're elements of the 4th Japanese Division that are landing there, so uh, hopefully he's tying up a large number of troops landing at Balak Papan, and that'll buy us some more time before he moves on Java. I'm not sure uh, historically when the landing on Java's, uh, Java started. I think, was it March? Still got a little bit of time to go till then. March 1st? Okay. So hopefully we can just kind of keep to the historical pacing, because if we can keep to the historical pacing, I think uh, the eventual production advantages of the Allies will play in our favor. Uh, but if we can't, that might be problematic. Meanwhile, we've moved into the air phase here, so I don't think we have any aircraft left at Balakpap, and we have a small ground force, but again, not a place you can really effectively reinforce. Large Japanese raid, Japanese raid flying toward Changsha. 18 Oscar, 1 Cs, and 33 Nates, so 40, uh, sorry, 51 fighters. We've got 19 flying tigers that are flying to intercept here, so this is, this is what we had hoped for, although I had hoped for not quite as many Oscars getting involved here. I'm hoping we can break into the bomber formation and do some serious damage, but this is our first major air battle in China in a while. You can see here that the uh, H-81A3s, which are P-40B variants that the Flying Tigers flew, uh, are engaging here these Japanese fighters. They have not gotten into the bombers yet. Uh, the Nates are much more maneuverable and can get around them and can damage them, uh, but the Nates lack sort of that killer firepower that's going to likely destroy many H-81s. The Oscars, I believe, I'm not sure if it's the variant with the cannon or not, but I... I which... 
Does anybody know which Oscar is the one that has the cannon? Because if it doesn't, there's a, there's an older version of the Oscar that just has two like seven five millimeter uh, machine guns, which are very very weak. I thought they're they all have cannons. Newhauser. Well, the Nate does not. The Nate just has two puny machine guns. I know that, at least according to the game. Um, and then there's a version of the Oscar that just has uh, puny machine guns as well. But it's probably the the one A, I would guess, because the older version probably doesn't have cannons. The one C is the one we're flying against, and I would assume they have cannons. Nonetheless, um, our experienced flying tigers engaging in a lot of swirling dogfights here over uh, Changsha. Not uh, a lot of kills either way uh, that, that have occurred so far. We're not seeing much in the way of kills. It does look like the Japanese are diving on us now. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we're not actually seeing a lot of aircraft die. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this thing. I don't want to make you wait too long. And we really didn't get into the bombers and do much of it all. Great. Um, all right, so they got through to the, the base. The A has the two 7.7 millimeters. I didn't see, according to this, we only, we lost one aircraft, one H-81 A-3. The Japanese lost one Oscar and one Sally damaged. So according to this initial combat result, not a terribly uh, meaningful result in any event. Although there were definitely a lot of damaged aircraft, so we'll have to take a look at the post-battle phase to see what we're actually seeing. Because there could be a lot of operational losses uh, that occurred after the fact. Okay, another raid flying here over Changsha. This one's only escorted by 13 enemy fighters, six Oscars and seven Nates. Said we had 10 H-81s intercepting and 33 enemy Sallies. So uh, maybe, it looks like some additional cap is coming in here. We're diving on the enemy Oscars. They're bombing at 3,000 feet or something like that, or 10,000 feet. I set my bombers to low, or my fighters to lower altitudes because according to um, the intelligence from the previous raids, he was bombing at like 3,000 feet or some absurdly low altitude, probably to make sure he was really effective. But that does mean that it's much easier for our fighters to dive on a very low-flying bomber formation. Should make them more vulnerable. You can see these uh, H-81s. We did have one swoop in on a Sally and it shot one enemy down. Uh, there's defensive fire. Uh, we're having some aircraft withdraw due to um, some damage. How did you put a Christmas hat on my emoji there, like a demon? Is that is that a Twitch thing? That looks pretty freaking awesome. Um, okay, so continuing to engage the enemy bombers, several of them are being driven back. At least one destroyed. I haven't really been paying too close. Another one destroyed there. So let's go ahead and fast forward through this and see what happens. Okay, 18 bombers make it through to their targets. We hit them again on the way out. It looks like two Sallies destroyed, eight damage there. So, two bombers shot down without loss for us, eight damage. That could also yield more operational losses. So, that's actually a very good result. The first result wasn't, you know, super meaningful, but that was a very good result for us. Not an outright slaughter as I would hope, but uh, XTRG has apparently learned not to leave his bomber formations completely unescorted in the way that he did over the Philippines uh, or to a lesser extent over Singapore uh, earlier in the war. Recon over Ambon, which, by the way, the Japanese dropped like a regiment there that has been stuck there for a couple of weeks and hasn't been doing anything. Moving into the PM phase. Float planes and Catalinas doing their thing. Japanese putting a large force near Gazma, it looks like. Okay... Savi air mission canceled due to something. Did we have an air mission flying out of Savi? Or maybe it was just a recon mission. All right, let's fast forward through that. Is that all we got? Interesting, I haven't... It doesn't look like he attacked the transports we had unloading supplies at Rangoon, which is a very good thing for us as well. So that's uh, actually, I'd, hopefully those first two transports have completely unloaded and they can fall back now and we can have another uh, set of transports come in and unload more supply 
And uh, if he's going to let us do that, we could get, you know, 150,000 or even some smaller or meaningful amount of supplies into Burma ahead of any major aerial campaign against the city. He's already bombed it several times, but nothing happened this last turn, so that's good for us. Meanwhile, Japanese bombardment at Wenkou. Don't imagine anything's going to change there very much. Allied casualties, a few. Japanese deliberate attack here on the rail line between uh, Xinyang and I'm not sure that base, but it's to the west of Kaifang. It's obviously going to succeed. 48th Jap er, Chinese Corps surrenders. Only 285 men left in the Corps. Was on the rail line, though. Japanese deliberate attack at Rabaul. It's probably going to drive the Lark Battalion back again. It did, but it does tell us that the enemy still has a infantry regiment, the 24th Infantry Regiment, several SN or an SNLF force. Uh, so he's reduced his strength at Rabaul considerably. He had a full division there. Now it's just a regiment, but it's still a strong unit that could be used on forward offensives. Deliberate attack at Samolik here, Con again sort of solidifying his hold on these islands to the east of Timor toward uh, New Guinea. Allied bombardment attack. It looks like it's just one-third of a division, so more like a regiment. But he has uh, 145 assault value on the 4th Infantry Division here at Balak Papan ashore. Japanese shock attack at Maskar against the remaining elements there. The Maskar garrison will surrender. That's 352 more uh, prisoners of war. This is one of his other regiments of the 4th Division. is still on Celebs. So he split the 4th Division up to effectively support his attacks in the Dutch East Indies. A shock attack here to the west of Nanjing. These Chinese troops continue to retreat. They lose 178 more men. They're already combat ineffective, so they're really just acting as more of a decoy. And so that looks like it's going to be it for the turn. So we'll have to jump in and see what our intelligence claims. So we have the combat results which said like three or four aircraft shot down with another, you know, ten or so damaged. Um, but I'm curious to see what the actual intelligence reports claims, because again, that doesn't factor in things like operational losses or losses for aircraft that we didn't actually confirm a kill. That just basically looks at like gun camera footage. So it can be very inaccurate. Well, that probably explains why our fighters didn't get blasted out of the sky. I don't think we, I mean, we wouldn't get the manpower back. We can't disband them anyway. Ask me anything about World War II aircraft. Good to know. All right, so let's take a quick look at the intelligence report. Intelligence claims 14 Japanese air-to-air -air losses, two Allied air-to-air -air losses. We're claiming five Sallies, four shot down in the air, one operational loss. We're claiming four Oscars, all air-to-air -air kills. Uh, we lost two aircraft and then a bunch of other smaller number of aircraft lost. If we take a look at pilots lost, um, looks like we only had one pilot wounded in action. No one was killed in action. Uh, and I think we may have a new ace or two here if we look down at some of these guys like Seamont or LS Bishop. Uh, elements of the 3rd and 2nd AVG squadrons all have aces now, as well as the 1st AVG squadron. Yeah, uh, Big Terp, there's an AM and a PM phased air operations, so you can have multiple raids, if you will. Okay... Oh, the fortifications coming at Chengsha. Are we back up to level 5? We're about halfway to level 5, 40%. Meanwhile, we've reinforced some of the other flank cities and towns. The 3rd and 2nd AVG squadrons that just laid that ambush over Chengsha are going to go ahead and fall back. I'm assuming he knows where they came from. He probably has recon flying all over, and so he'll probably counter uh, our squadrons here by bombing us. So I'm actually going to go ahead and pull these guys back to Chungking, or at least the ones that have operational aircraft. The majority of them are still operational. I have a couple of damaged aircraft, but I'm going to pull these guys back to Chungking because I'm assuming he's going to go for that base and try and bomb us. Um, he'll probably try and bomb Changfeth, where they based out of. He did that last time. 
And so we were able to pull all but six of the aircraft back. The other six aircraft are currently undergoing repairs. Uh, looks like two of them will be done tomorrow. Um, one in two days. And then the other group has five in seven days. Yikes. But we should at least get three of those aircraft back pretty quickly. Um, there's just a one turn is one day, Big Turp. It's just in terms of how the ca combat res resolutions are processed. It's um, it, it breaks the resolution into multiple phases. Okay, so China, not a lot of other things to really do at the moment. Where are these guys moving to anyway? Xinjiang. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to sneak in four Chinese core here, a considerable strength south, a thousand assault value into Xinjiang to cut the rail line again in a very strong and meaningful way uh, that would require redeploying of a full Chinese or Japanese division. That's the goal, retaking this base. Um, I'm doing that not because I've got supply to spare, because I don't, but I actually don't even have enough supply to keep the guys at Nanyang, where they had been based out of, permanently supplied. So rather than retreat or abandon a base that I don't have enough supply for, I'm going to try and capture a Japanese city uh, and, and sort of break up our, uh, our, our formations a little bit so that they're a little bit more manageable from a supply perspective. I've also sent a couple of the units back to Cyan, uh, away from Nan Nanyang. I really can't hold Nanyang. There's not enough supply filtering forward to it. Meanwhile, I've got a large blocking force of 1,800 assault value here along the railway towards Cyan. And then I've also got a large number of Chinese troops in Cyan itself, uh, about 2,600 assault value. And the supply situation at Cyan, even though it's red, is it's almost the requested amount of supply. And Cyan generates its own supply, so that's good. It's also tied up to Langkau on a major road, which provides supply as well. Yeah, like a Jimin, when we took Yi Chang back from the Japanese, we got a big chunk of supply from them. Okay. I don't know if there's any detection over those guys or not. In any event, that's the situation in China. Not a lot has changed. He's still trying to, to weaken Wang Kao. But I don't have a lot else to show there. So I moved my aircraft back to Chongqing. And I think we also need to we need to stand them down. Where are these Hudson supplying to anyway? Yi Chang? Um Rest these pilots here. Their fatigue is actually not that bad. Um, improving the supply situation, uh, Jawert can be done in theory. If you pump enough supplies into Rangoon, it will filter into China very inefficiently. You'll lose a lot of it, but it will slowly move supply along this rail line here through Lashao and then across the Burma road into China. 2000 supply does generate in Kuming every day. And that filters through to the rest of China. That's to, to simulate the Burma road. But if you overstack Rangoon and Burma with supplies, it will act as a little bit of a, of a conduit of additional supply into China. You can never really, in 1941 and 42, you really can't solve the China supply problem. Um, it, you, you really are, are not able to undertake any massive offensives in China, probably till 44, when the supply situation in China changes a bit. The problem is China's too weak generally against a human opponent to survive very effectively that long. But better players than I certainly have, have managed to do a better job of it. All right, so these guys are building fortifications behind the river at Pegu. Those other two brigades are falling back. Meanwhile, one of our units here, these guys are almost done unloading their supply. They've unloaded 60% of their supply, the Indian uh, and the Ma Montanan. Uh, both are down to 2,600 supply. So they are putting additional supply into Rangoon, not much. We've got an additional 6,400 coming uh, in this task force, which has not yet been detected by the Japanese at all. Uh, and that'll be headed toward Rangoon as well. Um... I think, given the lack of air activity so far and the fact that one of these 
groups is going to be coming off. Whoops, is going to be coming out um, of Rangoon next turn. I can probably safely send two more down that way. So we've got this kind of constant chain of two transports per day. If he does turn his air against us, then we'll lose like 20 victory points, but uh, that's fine. I'm not too worried about that. So we'll keep kind of sending two transports per day down to Rangoon uh, and uh, and hope he doesn't uh, doesn't pick up on this. Doesn't look like there was any actually uh, air cover over Rangoon. It looks like because it was heavy rain, so that probably prevented him from spotting us. Heavy cloud over here to the west. Um, sneaky supply reaching Batan. We're trying. We have, I think, one patrol ship here. It's close, so we're going to send it at flank speed. We'll set its home base to Batan. And we'll try and sneak it in there. It looks like it should get there. So it's going to go full speed straight into Batan, assuming that there's no more Japanese surface task forces operating in the area, which there were. He does have a small amount of detection on it, but he may just think it's more of those motor torpedo boats at Boswanga. So again, that's beneficial that I'm keeping those those ships there because he, he sent some destroyers down there and engaged them, and, it, and maybe he realized it probably wasn't worth his while. So we've got this one Dutch patrol craft coming in with 635 supply. That's not very much, but any supply is, is helpful. We have 33,000 supply, meanwhile, at Batan itself. Batan has level four fortifications. We're doing everything we can not to expend our supply. We're trying to preserve our, our fortifications, preserve our supply there. Uh, we've got 1,800 assault value there. They're behind level four forts and good terrain. Um, Japanese troops ashore at Balak Papin are going to easily overwhelm our defenders uh, there. Probably next turn if they launch an attack. We've got level two forts there, so maybe we can delay it a turn. I guess we'll see. Um, Dutch sub returning to port to replenish. American sub. I think we want a new patrol zone here, probably, just outside Balak Papin. Maybe even including Balak Papin. It's very shallow water, so you got to be careful about that, but... Um, these guys are moving to Colombo. Couple of AMCs. These guys are moving to Perth. Probably won't get there. Meanwhile, we're working on getting our light cruiser out of here. It's still switching out of the dockyard. Won't be ready for two more days. Or our subs here. Great. So the subs are going to take 15 days to repair. This guy's used a little bit of ammo. You wish you could understand what you're watching. <laughs> it's it's a little bit of a difficult uh, difficult game to explain at times, I'll be honest. We're going to disband there and let you repair your system. These guys are going to disband until we can form a new tanker convoy. All right, so we've got one more ship still in Perth unloading 7,600 sub fuel. The other one's just unloaded a bunch. Quarter million fuel out coming out of Perth. It's a good amount. We've got additional fuel. Well, those tankers headed back to Colombo. Do we have any other ships on their way? 14,000 coming in from these two tankers over here. This light cruiser is going back to Perth, I guess, on its own. This heavy cruiser formation is keeping patrol on the northwest coast of Australia. Meanwhile, our carriers... That's coming to Perth. Uh, we've got two carrier groups here. We've got the Indomitable on their way here toward Perth as well from Colombo. And then we've got the Hermes also on their way. Uh, Wagga Wagga? Where is Wagga Wagga? I don't even remember. Um, what do we 
all have here ASW mine layers. Let's try and get those guys out of here. Let's pull these guys back to Oosthaven. Probably not going to have the, the fuel to get anywhere, but I'm going to try and pull these ships at, pa at Palembang back. All right. Maybe use a little bit of the fuel up at Oosthaven. Palembang, meanwhile, is at 26,000 fuel, almost 600,000 oil, unfortunately. Not much I can do to stop that. No ships are air at Balak Poppin, so that's good. Uh, Wagga Wagga, Australia? Probably nothing. It's on the northern coast. Where's that? Back here. Yeah, over here. Um, Wagga Wagga has several units here that we're consolidating or, or grouping together to form eventually into divisions. Nothing worth... Um, worrying too much about. Two Japanese units are trying to move across the mountains from Buna to Port Moresby. Got two companies of reinforcements working on their way back to Port Moresby. Port Moresby itself about 7,000, just shy 8,000 supply. Level 3 fortifications, just shy 200 assault value. Meanwhile, the tanker Samarius, which was hit by a Japanese torpedo last turn, is getting close to getting back to port at Townsville. We've also got a troop transport on the way to Townsville, hopefully to load reinforcements for Port Moresby or maybe at least additional supply. Meanwhile, I don't want to forget about these Air Cobras. I'm going to fly to Rangoon, merge with their group there. Do we have any other Air Cobras around? Doesn't look like it. Um, let's see here. Fighter situation at Rangoon. We're back up to 34 red ready fighters out of 61 after the major air battles there a couple turns ago. Still working on getting that uh, that number back a little bit higher. We have more aircraft, however, than we have aviation support for the base. Do we have any heavy bombers that can fly out of here? No, the Liberators are not ready yet. 34th Squadron, where are they based out of? Lido. Let's go ahead and get the one aircraft that's ready out to Lido land it there. We're also building up a heavy bomber formation at Lido, hopefully in the hope that we can, you know, use it as a supply ba base to, to resupply um, China. No, we're going to keep those patrol craft uh, at Seabang. We may move the, the Lone Stars to um, I don't know if I have enough the problem is these these they're cargo sh aircraft with really short legs. Um, yeah. What are the groups here in two 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 or two two five or two two one? What do we have at Rangoon? Do we have anything? Two two one. We have 124 political points. It'll cost 36 to move these guys. I don't know if it's really worth moving these guys, but we will. We're going to fly these guys to Rangoon. So now we'll have some more cargo ships that we can, uh, cargo aircraft that we can try and resupply China with. Although, again, I'm not sure if that's the most efficient use of our political points. I'd rather save them for moving U.S. heavy units over. Meanwhile, we did have the uh, cargo ship task force here. It doesn't look like these guys took any damage. So it says they're going to arrive at base in 30 days. 
They're all still at 0134 system damage, so maybe they'll get there without sinking. I was worried they were going to take unsustainable amounts of systems damage, because when you're moving and you don't have fuel, you do. But when you're off map, the rules are a little bit different. So maybe they're not taking system damage and they're slowly making their way there. I'm not sure. I'm hopeful in any event. Um, they can move from Eastern Burma bases, Terje, but I don't know if they can move from India itself. We'll have to see. Meanwhile, these tankers are headed to Perth, Colombo. Rangoon. Oh, yeah, we're bringing some reinforcements to Rangoon. And then we've got these Aussie divisions on their way down to Australia, down to Perth. Making a wide detour. All right, disband those guys. Okay. I sucked most of the supplies out of Cape Town, too. Sending them to Rangoon. Cape Town does generate 2,000 a day. Doesn't generate anywhere near enough fuel, but it does generate 2,000 supplies per day. These guys are loading fuel. They're going to head to Colombo with a large amount of fuel for the base there. 33,000 to help with the shuttling of fuel to Australia. We're going to load 15,000 fuel up on these cargo ships inefficiently and transport it to Karachi. Hey, coffee filter. Um, I think that's about it for India. Australia don't have a lot else to do. Now, with the taking of Tiana... It can become a major base. It is closer to Fiji. But it doesn't really... It's actually further north than Nomaya. So I don't think it radically changes the situation for our supplies. Meanwhile, we are putting troops on Vavu between Pago Pago and Suva. These guys are still unloading super inefficiently. They can't unload everything, unfortunately. Because I botched the convoy route. I, I do need to see here. Are they getting any more ashore? Yes, they are. Okay, so they've got some of the base forces ashore. Some engineer vehicles and engineers ashore. That's the key. Because what we need to do at Vavu is we need to build the port up to level 2. So we can... Let's actually stop building fortifications for the time being. Well, we need to build up the port capacity so that we can um, bring in more. All right, let's do this. This AP here has no troops aboard. Uh, what we need to do is we need to bring these troops ashore. We need to get the port built up so we can bring the rest of the troops ashore because right now the troops are unable to move ashore. So I'm trying to get supply. These guys have troops aboard. Uh, form a convoy, I guess, of transport. Can these guys dock? No. Well, in any event, unload your cargo over the beach. We probably need more supply at the base to do that. It's going to take for frickin' ever, but we need to get it done. Um, all right, meanwhile, Suva, Nadi, you're working on building those fortifications up. The carriers are moving west toward Melbourne. They're going to swing around Tasmania to avoid any enemy subs and then swing in north this way. I just need to change their orders. I don't have a lot else going on. I know we did send that one cruiser up north above Midway. This group up here. We haven't spotted anything yet. They have been lightly detected. 
So we're moving up this way, mission speed. Okay. Mine lane, disband those guys. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's take a look at the intelligence report. Let's see if there's anything else worth showing off here. Heavy volume of radio transmissions in Nagasaki, Tabarfan, Sunu. Um, he's brought in road construction to, Shang uh, to Shanghai. So he has a independent regiment planning for an attack in Yan'an. In China, he has a, why would he use a JAF, uh, air, aircraft construction company, planning for an attack at Singapore? Okay. Singapore is no surprise. We already know about that. The Yan'an thing is, I think we've detected that a couple of times. That would kind of indicate perhaps a desire to swing north, I think it unlikely. We've got a pretty strong blocking force of over 700 AV on the only direct route to Yan'an. And um, I think it's unlikely that they that they try and flank Sion by this wide flanking maneuver. It's frankly too slow to be effective. He could also move through Pao Tao and then toward Langkau, but I think that's also unlikely. You want to see the battleships? Okay. Uh, battleships. What you doing? We've got five battleships at Pearl, the War Spite, a British one, and then the Mississippi, New Mexico, Idaho, and Colorado, all American ships. Um, I think due for upgrades later this year. Not yet. The uh, War Spite, meanwhile, already upgraded in San Francisco. Uh, all of these ships have surface search and uh, air search radar. So that's good. Colorado has a good deal of anti-aircraft fire as well. But, oh wow, the Queen Elizabeth has tremendous anti-aircraft fire. 1,500. Um, the damaged ones at Pearl. Do we have any battleships? Yeah, we have four battleships under repair at Pearl. The Nevada will be joining the other ships in four days. She's almost done with her repairs. So that'll be nice to have another battleship added to the fleet. Uh, meanwhile, in about a month and a half, the Oklahoma will be completing its com uh, its repairs taken from damage at Pearl Harbor. Uh, and then we have the California and the Tennessee both a ways out from being ready for anything uh, other than sitting in the dockyards. Meanwhile, we have some of the other battleships here. Uh... We have some other battleships here. We've got the Pennsylvanias 168 days out in San Diego. Uh, we've got the, uh, where is it? Mare Island has another battleship. The West Virginia will be ready in 127 days. San Francisco has two battleships, the Maryland and the Arizona. They'll be ready a little bit more quickly. Maryland in about a month and a half. Arizona ready in about three months. Um, is that it? Do we have anyone up in San Fran or Seattle? I don't think we do. No, we don't. So that's the situation right now. Um, again, there's there's a lot of logistics and other things like that uh, going on. Yeah, the thing about Nevada pulling about a pier side, putting it pier side is, I don't know. It's four days right now. It may repair faster at pier side, but it's going to take a couple of days to switch it into pier side. So that would actually, like, if I switch a ship out of shipyard to pier side, it takes three days just to take it out of the shipyard and put it into pier side. And I don't think it continues repairing during those three days. So I think if I wait for the four days, it'll be out of the shipyard and it'll be ready. So I think it's a slight quirk in the game is, is I think, again, that I'll have to, I don't have to wait if I wait for it to be fully repaired in the shipyard as opposed to changing the repair status does require waiting and then repairing. So in this scenario, I think it's actually going to be faster uh, to just let it finish. Um, but yeah, that's the situation right now, guys. I think that's probably going to do it for this episode. I don't have a lot else to show. 
Um, and I'm still kind of moving different pieces into place. But um, other than that, just kind of logistics, kind of pulling those aircraft back, and we'll see what happens going forward. With that being said, uh, I hope you guys all had a great holiday. I am going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Hope you guys did enjoy. And as always, until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm out.